in today's presentation, I'm going to walk through a lot of the fundamentals of influencer engagement, uh, and then uh, leave you with some tools that you can use yourself if you're looking at starting influencer engagement. Uh, and then we'll also make this presentation available uh, for those of you who would like to explore it a little further. Uh, the format today is a 45 minute webinar. Uh, and we, I will present for the first 20 to 30 minutes, uh, and then afterwards we'll have uh, dialogue questions. On your control panel, uh, there will be um, questions and a place to pose those, uh, and I'll get to those towards the conclusion of the presentation. Uh, why don't we get started and um, walk through engaging global influencers? And I call this from conversations to community. And a lot of that will become uh, much more apparent. Um, and especially if you've been an influencer who's worked with me, you'll understand why we talk about community, but more on that in a moment. Let me begin by introducing you to the Tantalus Group. Tantalus is a global management consultancy with a specific focus on strategic communications. Uh, we work with clients globally generally with the CEO or the chief communications officer, working on issues of international, multinational uh, corporate reputation, uh, positioning issues in crisis management. Uh, we have quite a strong uh, number of colleagues uh, from who had served as heads of function in global organizations in the past, and we're proud of our long-term relationship that we have with our clients around the world. One of the differentiators of the Tantalus Group is the focus on senior level talent, the people who work in our organization, whether in our head office in Vancouver or uh, around the world. I've got colleagues in London, Dubai, Singapore, here in Hong Kong, um, Toronto, you name it. Uh, but they tend to have been uh, former global heads of communications. And the uh, firm also enjoys and works with a number of professors, experts, um, authors of books, uh, and influencers on stage, uh, as well as in periodicals. So very happy to share more about the Tantalus Group. As for myself, um, I am originally from the United States, uh, but I've been living in the Asia Pacific region for uh, over 20 years now. Uh, I've spent quite a bit of time in Australia, uh, as well as here in Hong Kong uh, and across the border in China. Uh, for three years, I worked at Huawei Technologies, uh, where I was vice president of global corporate communications. And I began and led uh, the firm's global influencer relations program. And so this is not a case study on my work there, but you'll hear a lot of the learnings uh, that are baked into running a three-year global program. By the time I left Huawei at the end of last year, uh, we had some 225 influencers in 20 plus countries around the world. So it was really quite an interesting uh, program. Uh, with some great influencers, some of whom I see here attending today. So um, now, uh, what we're going to do today, as I mentioned at the outset, is I'll present for about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, then we will have Q&A. Uh, we will have to end this brief, uh, abruptly after 45 minutes. So um, at 5.15 local time here, or in just about another 35 minutes, uh, 40 minutes, we'll be having to wrap it up. Um, I will take time for questions at the end. What I'm gonna start with is um, developing your program. I want this to be as useful as possible because um, having worked in influencer relations, uh, I've had so many questions from uh, professionals who are wondering how they might start this in their own company. And I hate to say it, but you might be surprised to find that you're conducting elements of influencer engagement today. Uh, however, you might not be actually maximizing the program. Uh, we'll also then look at the fundamentals of setting up your program and then how you set your strategy and measure your ROI. 
Um, it's very important at the outset to make sure you understand why you're engaging influencers and what you hope to get out of the program. Uh, because if you aren't clear about your objectives, then you're going to find that the program is less than ideal and uh, weaves um, all around the place. Uh, it's not a satisfying experience for you. It certainly isn't a uh, good ROI for management. And it's somewhat difficult for the influencers themselves. So if um, I can give you one tip, it's really understand the why of getting behind influencer engagement. So let me start by defining um, a few of the terms that I've been using uh, earlier. Um, I talked about uh, influencers, uh, influencer engagement, uh, you've heard influencer relations, and you'll even hear influencer marketing. Uh, I'll come into the difference between influencer marketing and influencer engagement, but let's start by defining deeper uh, influencer engagement. Across the top of your screen, you're going to see a photograph with quite a large number of people that were attending a Huawei event that I'd organized uh, a few years back. Um, and this program is the embodiment of influencer engagement, where we're looking at the long-term development of relationships with people who have a very high profile and are seen as thought leaders in you, the industry. Now, what makes them an influencer, uh, at least for this program definition, um, includes a fairly high uh, uh, audience on social media, uh, whether that's LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, to a lesser degree for influencer engagement, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, YouTube, um, and more. Um, what we find is that when we're getting towards high-level influencers, or what I like to call KOLs, key opinion leaders, is that the social media presence they have is a byproduct of their other work as authors, academics, experts, opinion leaders, in their respective fields. So these are not people who have purposely tried to drive a social media following so that they can expand their influence. This is what you'll find are experts and thought leaders who have, by sharing and by understanding social, have built an audience who are very passionate and interested in their area. So, uh, when you engage with an influence, you'll find that they think frequently about their audience. So they'll want to find content, relationships, and work that makes sense for what their audiences are passionate about. Um, what you'll find is that you have a lot of information and executive access that they'll want to be able to uh, provide to their audiences. So you're giving them VIP access to a lot of information and they're receiving first insights um, and information. But generally, when we're talking about an influencer, we're talking about someone who, along with their expertise as an author or academic, also uh, maintains a fairly high profile on social media. Earlier, I mentioned the difference between engagement and marketing. Uh, influencer marketing on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see really came to um, be further developed, especially in the consumer products area. Uh, this is where you're finding luxury products, travel brands, makeup, um, uh, entertainment, uh, and others. Uh, influencer marketing is paid engagement or strategic engagement of influencers around a product in a short program, campaign-driven uh, engagement. Um, and you're looking in influencer marketing for those who have highest number of contacts within the target demographic that you're going after. So as an example, if you're a craft beer, that has uh, uses non-GMO ingredients only, you'll find that there are audiences, there are influencers who are very interested in craft beer, 
in GMO, in nutrition, in other areas, and they can get behind and help better understand what your brand has to offer. On the right-hand side, we're looking more at, say, a B2B level engagement, which is influencers where you're trying to develop longer term relationships focused on your corporate image, your corporate reputation, so that the company, uh, that, so that these people can have a deeper understanding of what it is you're trying to achieve as a corporation and how they might share that information. This is great for a long-term sales cycle when your products such as uh, SAP or Adobe, where the software has quite high licensing fees, people are trying to ensure that this is the kind of company they want to do business with. So what you're looking then is for influencers who have an affinity or an interest in your uh, company and what you have to offer, uh, but also that they're aligned with the style and the approach of the uh, what it is, the way you go about your business. So you'll find as you get to know some of these influencers that they have um, very different styles and very different audiences. And over time, you're going to find that you're going to uh, work deeper with influencers that are aligned with your company's values. So this is a short overview of the difference between influencer marketing and influencer engagement. Uh, one thing I also want to say is traditionally, and this is blurring this line, is that on the left, influencer marketing has been very focused on pay for play, uh, paid promotions, uh, the Instagram star who gets 100,000 US dollars for three posts of photos uh, with the product, whereas influencer engagement um, is looking at other kinds of reward whether that's uh, first um, on site at new product offerings or um, executive access or um, advanced information. At Huawei, we engaged with people who were very keen to better understand the global organization and where it was going. So that was a real long-term relationship. Now, um, you'll find that your uh, team members and your colleagues are already conducting some elements and where you'll find is that you need to make sure that the objectives for your influencer engagement program is those objectives are aligned with what you're trying to achieve in corporate reputation. A lot of companies begin influencer engagement because they're trying to reach new audiences, uh, achieve third party credibility, are looking for ways of deepening the understanding of what the company is uh, doing and achieving. Um, and it will also, as when we talk about where to find some of these influencers, you may also see that they're already existing within your current uh, corporate communications network. So as one example in government affairs, you might find former ministers with responsibility for your portfolio uh, who now have taken on jobs as consultants, academics, or authors who then also have a high social media profile. So you can work with them to help enhance corporate reputation through influencer engagement. So uh, one thing I would recommend is try to keep influencer engagement and media relations a little bit separate. Um, media tend to have a fairly uh, straightforward and aggressive style, whereas you'll find with influencers is they're uh, more um, accommodating, more understanding, more willing to engage in a, a longer term story. So um, the style is a little different from traditional media, uh, and that was one of the pleasant surprises in working with it. So. Uh, when you look back at that last slide with the wheel, you will find that there are probably already quite a number of influencers that you would have um, engagement with that would um, be uh, possibly already interested in your organization. So here um, on the uh, here are some examples just of. Uh, influencers that might be of interest to companies in oil and gas. You're going to find influencers through a variety of ways uh, and that you might be 
um, already working with some of them. In a moment, I'll talk about the process of identifying influencers. And as I said earlier, which might not have been heard, is I had taken a hypothetical case of putting together sample influencers for a company in the oil gas industry. Um, however, this could just as easily have been freight forwarding, shipping, uh, biotechnology, healthcare, medicine, et cetera. Uh, you'll find that there are influencers who have a passion and an interest in a number of areas. Um, You'll also find that the um, uh, there are most likely influencers who had been or are CEOs at uh, competitive organizations. Um, and you might think through who in your organization might be an influencer in terms of uh, top leadership members, et cetera. Okay. In influencer marketing, uh, it's a very clear financial relationship where you're working with an influencer and they're getting paid per tweet or paid per share. Uh, many times when you're working with influencer engagement, it might not be contracted by a number of shares. Instead, what you're looking at is a longer term relationship. So you're looking for uh, setting up a program that becomes mutually beneficial for the influencers as well as your company. Uh, for the influencer or the KOL, that can be advanced access to information, um, in-depth insights into new technologies or trends, um, and that helps them um, uh, meet their audience's needs. Um, you're getting them and helping them with access. Um, for the company, you're achieving third-party credibility, uh, you're getting uh, new networks and uh, social contacts who you might not have uh, worked with in the past, and then you're creating longer-term advocates who will be able to continue having conversations about the company uh, long after uh, the, the, the trip has ended and the engagement um, has quieted down. So this one map, uh, this one slide perhaps um, encapsulates in uh, one, uh, this one slide uh, I feel uh, walks you through the roadmap of what it is you need uh, to do to begin um, influencer engagement. So uh, you'll see that we're going to begin with strategy, go into some engagement tools, look at how you might integrate influencers in a global conference, uh, and then also longer term management of the community. So I'm only going to have an option uh, ability to fly over these given the, the time we have available. Um, so let's, let's, let's carry on. I'll start with the um, setting up the program. Earlier in my call, I mentioned the importance of understanding your strategy and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, when you're looking at influencer engagement, most of the time you're looking at building a small to mid-sized community of people who truly understand the organization and can share within their networks information and background about your company. Um, so you would want to make sure that the program is aligned to support your broader corporate reputation strategy, but also that you understand the long-term nature of the engagement. Uh, much like media relations, it's not a program you turn on and turn off. It's uh, one day you don't have government relations and the next day you do. This is an ongoing engagement and a dialogue. Uh, you need to also be very clear about what are the metrics and how you measure this um, and what the um, program is going to look like in terms of ROI. Um, so that makes it easier for you to make sure that your program is achieving the outcomes that you had hoped for. Uh, you'll also, when you're developing your strategy, want to make sure you have a good calendar of continued ongoing engagement. Uh, you cannot, uh, much like the media, you can't turn to them only when you want them uh, and then disappear from view. Uh, you'll need to make sure you set up systems that allow you to share 
even during the quieter periods or when you don't have um, major news, but just keeping the conversation going. Um, when you you might think about it in terms of on calendar and off calendar with on calendar being major conferences events uh, executives attending world economic forum scheduled announcements quarterly results etc uh, whereas off calendar would be ways to carry on the conversation whether those are tweet chats facebook live sessions uh in market visits and getting to know each other so um you have to um, make sure that there's an, a continual dialogue uh, and that's very much appreciated because the great influencers have very uh, engaged audiences who are always looking for information. So let's look at how you go about finding influencers. Um, first off, there are quite a number of software, uh, there is software available uh, that allows you that specifically track and uh, look at uh, influencers. Uh, you might look at a company, you might look at companies like Tracker, Analytica, uh, Clear, and others. Um, alternatively, you can just start diving into uh, Twitter, Facebook, and others and look at the hashtags around the conversations that matter to you. Um, you'll also find if you just type top influencers in your industry in, say, shipping, uh, you'll see that shipping publications will come out with annual lists of who are the top influencers. Uh, you might also think to look at uh, think tanks, uh, marquee customers, uh, university professors, analysts. Uh, if you have analyst relations, you'll find that a half dozen of those will also have fairly high levels of social media following. With that understanding, look deeper than into who is their audience and who are they reaching and what are the conversations they're having. You want to get a sense of the style of the person. Uh, so I suggest starting uh, to, to follow these people that you're thinking of engaging with and spend time listening and watching their stream and see how their audience interacts with them. Uh, please don't fall for numbers. Um, it's very easy to be tempted by the person with 250,000 or in mainland China, 25 million followers. Um, instead, what you're looking for is the audience that they're reaching. Uh, so you can do some quick geographic scans to see where the majority of subscribers are from, but you can then also look at their likely roles. Um, if you're looking at LinkedIn, you can see the positions of the people who are following that author. Um, and then get a sense for who they are, start reading their materials and seeing their style. If they have a generally negative view on your industry, it might not be the best place to start, but that would be someone you'd want to engage with later. But you want to make sure you're understanding them, not just on the surface, but getting to know how they operate. Uh, to begin a program, I would suggest trying to create a, a larger group of about 20 to 25 in possible influencers and then try in the first year to build a relationship with maybe 8 to 12 of those uh, on an ongoing basis. So you're not needing an enormous quantity of influencers. Um, just as a side note, uh, the majority of influencer relations, influencer engagement is occurring in the English language. When we look at the worldwide uh, audience uh, l language usage, you have about a billion people uh, communicating in English, about 700 million online using Mandarin, and then the next highest language is about 300 million in Spanish. Uh, that said, uh, when you're in country and you're in a market and they're using a language other than English, uh, please do try bilingual communication with the influencers um, because that's what their audience will be wanting. As you evaluate influencers, there are really three group, 
three ways to look at their profile, reach, relevance, and resonance. Uh, reach is, the qu is just the numbers, the number of people who follow them. Um, as I said earlier, don't fall for the folks with the biggest numbers. Uh, we worked very successfully with one influencer who had just a few thousand followers, but they were the right followers because that was an expert in a specific area um, that was uh, very technical. Uh, so we had the right followers for that level. Um, relevance is linking back to your business and their expertise. Um, occasionally, you know, you, you, these are the mistakes you make when you first begin, but we used to have some influencers who were maybe more kind of positive, spiritual, um, you can make a change kind of people, but not relevant to our industry. And while their numbers looked very good, um, it wasn't perhaps the most appropriate audience to engage with. So you want to understand, are they going to be uh, listened to by your audience? And then resonance. Uh, resonance is perhaps the most important of these three to look at, which is do people engage with their material? Are they sharing it? Is it being viewed? Is it being commented on? Um, I worked with a number of influencers and was amazed at how the 24-7 dialogue just carried on, where the influencer would post information, people would comment on it, and then they'd write back, and you'd really get a sense of engagement where the audience felt that the influencer was uh, doing a great job uh, looking after their needs. So those that's what I mean by resonance. Next thing is important is to get out and get to know them. Uh, the best meetings are still face to face. Um, you can and should be connecting with these influencers online. Uh, you'll need a community manager, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, who is very adept at online uh, social media conversations so that they can begin some of the introductory materials, messages, et cetera. But then, um, if you're in New York, if you're in London, if you're um, in Hong Kong, uh, set up a roundtable. Uh, get to know these people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the founder of Huawei, Ren Zhengfei, said, explore the universe over a cup of coffee. Uh, and it's a great uh, saying uh, to show how you can uh, really get to know people very well just based on uh, the face-to-face -face engagement. Uh, we would also, you might also look at providing executive access with a business deep dive, um, hosted round tables, meet, uh, meeting KOLs when you're in town. And then also you'll find that a number of these influencers will be attending major global conferences that might be your industry's major conference, whether that's MWC or CES, or it might be more of a social media conference such as RISE, Web Summit, a technology conference. Go to those. Uh, I've met uh, high-level influencers at the uh, Morgan Stanley China conference or through the uh, uh, AmCham or other associations. But you'll find people that are sharing information at a number of these. And then uh, develop a content strategy that gets these KOLs engaged in conversations, whether that's uh, blogs, blog posts, Facebook live sessions, do a webinar like this, introduction to your company, uh, Twitter chats and others looking for opportunities for ongoing dialogue. Um, cooperative content is really an area that I found the most surprising and also the most rewarding. Cooperative content or UGC, user generated content, is when uh, after, during an engagement, the influencers would then write up or and share what it is that they have learned, whether those are blog post articles or short videos or podcasts um, or um, uh, photos, uh, infographics, um, twi tweets, um, you'll need to provide these in influencers then the raw materials that will help them develop this content. 
um, whether those are pictures, facts, stats, um, correct spelling of executives' names and titles. Um, and then with that, you can take these small chunks and I call it atomize, you know, being able to break it down and put it into sizes that the influencers can then share amongst their networks. Um, you'll want to also delve deeper to understand what their specific interests are. So as one example, I worked with an influencer who had a very high interest in management theory, management strategy. So we provided information tailored to their need. Um, please uh, do expect balanced content. Uh, the influencers are not there just to help promote your business. Uh, they're going to say things that you might not like, or they might be very frank in their assessment of uh, your company. Uh, but that's much like public relations. That's the reality of engaging with audiences today. You don't want this to be a raw, raw, hurrah only session. Uh, a lot of uh, influencers um, are very useful when you're holding major conferences worldwide um, as they tend to, uh, first off, blow up the Twitter stream. Uh, it wouldn't be unusual to find uh, a dozen influencers are able to take a company and its subject matter and make them the trending topic on Twitter. Uh, at global conferences, if you're bringing influencers, you might also ask them to interview your executives for your company's YouTube channel or invite them to take a walk around your stand um, and uh, introduce the, your content to their audiences. Uh, here in the photograph, you'll see a variety of influencers that we worked with at Huawei. Um, and these people represent uh, quite a large number of countries and backgrounds and areas of expertise. Um, and through uh, this engagement, uh, we actually wound up building a community where the influencers learned as much from each other as they did from the company and the company material. Final point is community management. Um, understand that influencer engagement is not a one-off process, but it is an ongoing program. Um, and they need to know that you're going to be a, a steady and trustworthy long-term partner. Uh, you'll need someone to manage that community, to uh, make sure that their information needs are being met, uh, that they're getting the access to the executives uh, you will want to find within your company the experts who can then provide commentary to uh, folks with a large social following. Um, and just be consistent. Uh, just continue to make an effort. Um, I say here, you get what you schedule. Um, it's a little bit disappointing, that, but um, it is true that you need to make sure that you're working with this group of people on an ongoing basis. Measuring ROI, uh, again, much like public relations, media relations, government relations, you can define uh, what failure looks like if you're not doing it, but it's a little bit more challenging. So at the very outset, link it to your business objectives and understand why you're doing this um, and be very clear with the business owners with regards to what success looks like. Uh, you can, of course, create a financial ROI, which would look at the gain that you might get from influencer engagement coverage uh, versus the invested resource. But this tends to take a um, ad dollar equivalence uh, approach to uh, influencer engagement. What I mean by ad dollar equivalent is uh, if you looked at the front page of the Financial Times and there was a front page story very favorable about your company and uh, Marriott Hotels bought a large ad adjacent to it, How you would ask how much did Marriott pay for that much space on the front page? Well, sometimes uh, the value of a very positive front page story in the Financial Times far exceeds the cost of an ad on that same space. Again, look at 
um, competition. Um, uh, what is your share of online conversation and voice? Uh, what is the share of uh, positive versus negative coverage in social channels driven by influencers? Uh, and then also you might look at specific content campaigns. Uh, you might um, in, ask influencers to uh, join you in a uh, in a month-long conversation around certain subjects that are important for your company. And if you can measure the uh, shares, the click-through rates, and the page views, these are again ways to look at measuring influencer engagement. The um, Oh, apologies. So uh, getting started, uh, what would be kind of the call to action? Uh, first and foremost is developing your strategy, uh, writing out your goals, your measurement. What are the codependencies in terms of other departments that you need to work alongside? Um, and what are the risks and opportunities? Uh, conduct relationship mapping. Uh, you don't have to uh, undertake a software license to begin understanding who are the online influencers in your industry. Uh, talk with the people in social media, um, see who are the frequent commenters on your uh, corporate site. Um, we're not looking at trying to convert the gadflies and the haters. What we're looking at doing is the, are the watchers and the people who are interested in your business. Uh, start some conversations. Uh, I found that people who are successful in social media um, are generally social and they're people that you want to work with. Uh, so get to know their style, their expertise, their opinion, but you'll find that you'll be pleasantly surprised at how uh, genuinely nice uh, most of these high level influencers are. They're curious, they know how social media works, uh, they're quick to respond, uh, they're uh, passionate, they're professionals, um, but they're not there just for you. They also have other jobs and they've got to remain objective. But start to engage, start a conversation, build a community. Uh, I would recommend that you might aim to create a, an initial target list of 20 plus uh, KOLs that have the right profile, and then aim for within a year to have 10 to 12 high level, high quality relationships. So um, we're going to, um, with that, uh, we've got five minutes left for questions, and I'm um, happy to have had your time this afternoon. And um, let me see what we have. So so let's see. Um, yeah. So another example. So one of the questions was um, uh, one of the other questions was: Are there other examples of companies that do uh, influencer relationships well? Uh, you'll find that influencer relations are um, very much matured in the uh, United States, uh, and that a number of the technology companies are working with influencers. Um, I've spoken with and met the people who lead the influencer programs at SAP, Salesforce, uh, Adobe, um, and then, uh, of course, all of the major conferences such as South by Southwest, Web Summit, and others. Um, and then you'll also see that from a uh, both a, a product standpoint as well as a corporate reputation standpoint, uh, large organizations that have been through a crisis such as United Airlines have understood the importance of talking with influencers, not just about uh, the product, but about the corporate reputation. So uh, those are some examples and um, uh, interested to hear if you have uh, if anyone else has views about influencers who work well with them. So um, if you have, um, if uh, anyone else has any other questions or uh, chats, uh, I think you can on the right hand side, um, you can um, add those. 
Well, look, I um, provide here on the screen uh, my phone number, uh, my email address, as well as my Twitter uh, handle. Um, and I am happy uh, to take any additional questions you might have. Um, I love seeing amongst the attendees, uh, both former colleagues as well as uh, influencers that I had worked with in the past. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time and your interest in influencer relations and really have enjoyed the opportunity to host this webinar. Uh, if there are no other questions, then we'll um, gladly call this a successful engagement and um, move on. Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today, and I hope you have found this helpful and useful. Thank you very much, and have a great afternoon.